What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. We've got Kevin's car here in the garage today and this is going to be episode two of the track build series. If you guys haven't seen episode one of this build series, definitely go check that out so you have an idea of what we're doing to this car. Uh, basically, we're going to start on a couple power adders for today's video. We've got a Mach Schnell pulley kit as well as a Mach Schnell intake system to put on this car. So we might as well hit two birds with one stone since we have to remove the OEM airbox in order to get to the pulley. So let's get to it. These are performance underdrive pulleys from Mach Schnell. These are about $300 and they're made of T6 aerospace aluminum. Basically, this is a performance underdrive pulley kit that's not only strong, but also lightweight, which helps limit the parasitic drag from the accessories. And so this will replace the crank accessory and the power steering pulleys, which will result in a nine to 14 horsepower gain, as well as seven to nine foot pounds of torque for the M3. So by adding an underdrive pulley kit, such as this one here from Mach Schnell, it's designed to increase the power by reducing parasitic drag on the engine from spinning the alternator, the water pump, and AC compressor. So it's accomplished by slowing down the speed of these accessory drives that rob power from your engine. Since the car is naturally aspirated, I don't think we're gonna notice a huge horsepower jump, but it is going to be noticeable in the lower RPM range. Okay, we've got the hood propped up here and we're gonna go ahead and start off by removing this intake snorkel here. So there's a screw here and a screw here. These are T20s. And we're gonna remove this little piece here, just like that, pops right out. Now we're gonna start removing this intake box, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver and loosen this snorkel here, as well as this one over here. All right, we've got these two unscrewed. Now we need to remove this. If you just pinch it and squeeze it, it'll pop right out. Squeeze just like that, it comes apart. Now we can remove this little intake snorkel. To release the stock air box, we don't need to take the whole lid off, we'll just take the whole box out. You just need to take a 10 millimeter and screw these two here. Now the whole thing should lift out. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the entire radiator fan assembly, and we're gonna start here with this plug. Uh, just kinda gotta squeeze both sides of it, pull up just like that, and it'll unplug, move this out of the way. And now we can start on removing the actual uh, radiator assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these little pipes, these little uh, lines up and out of the way, just like that. And then there's a torx bit here. So this bolt right here is a T25. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Now that we've got that loose and pulled out, uh, this side of the radiator, radiator is not bolted in, so we just need to kind of move this out of the way and lift the radiator up and out. So the driver's side does not have a screw, but it does have this small little clip right here that you need to release. Basically, if you just kind of push up on it like that and pull up on the radiator support just like that, it'll come out. Now getting this out is kind of the tricky part. You gotta get it past some of these uh, wires and piping. So just be careful. All right, so we've got the fan assembly out over there. And now what we need to do, we have a special guest here today, Kevin. <laughs> this is the owner of this beautiful car here. So um, he's gonna help me a little bit today on uh, getting the rest of these pulleys done. So now what we need to do, there are th three little uh, tensioner caps. So there's one here. There's one right above it, which is hard to see on camera. And then there's a third one right here. So you need to take a flathead screwdriver and uh, pop those little caps off. Take a screwdriver and kind of, there's 
one. So that's what the cap looks like. I'm just kind of wedging the screwdriver in between like that, kind of popping it off. There's one. There's another one right here. Two. You want to show again what you're doing? I, I didn't get it. Yeah, so basically these are caps that are for the tensioners. The tensioners hold the belt and hold the belt taut. So um, we have to loosen the, ten the tensioners in order to get the belt off. They have these little protective caps that go on top of the actual screw. And so I'm just kind of taking a flathead screwdriver and wedging it like this and kind of popping it. So it's kind of hard to see, but I'm just kind of going like this and popping it off. And these are just compression fitted, so they'll just fit right back on. And this may happen. Uh, I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, this will likely happen. This is pretty common. When you're removing the fan assembly, um, if you're not careful enough, you might end up breaking the little nipple that comes out of the radiator hose um, right here and connects this pipe here. That's why I have these little two screws in here right now to hold it, uh, hold the radiator fluid in there. but. You'll likely break that part off, but no big deal. We're gonna get a replacement part from that. Um, on FCP Euro, it's like $25 for this entire hose. So we're gonna replace that and we're gonna do a, probably do a radiator flush anyway, so. So this is from uh website basically, and these are the three plastic tensioner caps that I just removed. They're circled here in red. So you can kind of see where they're positioned on the motor. All right, after you've got those caps removed, this right here is the power steering pulley and there's three bolts on here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those now. I've got a half inch socket and a three quarter inch drive here. So loosen all these. It should be pretty easy to remove. They're not very tight. how long the threads are. Okay, so I've got a 14 millimeter ratchet on here and this is the tensioner. We're basically gonna push this down and at the same time I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide the belt out of the way. So again, this is a tensioner, so it just moves and goes back into place, but you need to hold it down long enough to slide the belt out, just like that. All right, now there's the deflection pulley right here. We're gonna remove that one. I've got a 16 millimeter socket on here. And unscrew that. All right, so we've got this bolt unthreaded. It's pretty long, as you can see. And now this whole piece comes out just like that. And now we can go ahead and remove the belt. that. All right, so there's the, another tensioner on this side over here, the side of the motor. We're gonna move that one out of the way and simultaneously remove the belt on this side. Just kind of need to push it down. Next up, we're gonna remove the crank pulley. Uh, so you need a T45 and an extension. And there's six bolts down here. Kinda gotta feel around, cause you can't really see anything. Feel around and get it on there and remove all six. And they're not torqued on there very hard, so come off pretty easily.
There's one. Not very long, so there's six of these. All right, last bolt. So that comes off, and then the entire pulley also comes off. So that's what it looks like on the inside. It's basically like that. Or I'm sorry, all the way around. So I had all six of those bolts in there, look just like that. All right, so here's the new Mach Schnell pulleys on this side. The OE ones here. As you can see, the crank pulley is significantly smaller than the OE one. And then the other pulley is actually a little bit larger than the OE, OE one there. And we've got some new belts here. These are Continental belts. Um, the good thing about apparently about Mach Schnell uh, underdrive pulleys is if you happen to damage one of these belts, you can probably go pick one of these up at a local auto parts store versus you know a Dynan or um, what was the other one? Active Auto Work, which um, you have to buy specific belts for. So that's the advantage of going with a Mach Schnell. And there are the original belts there. So now we can go ahead and install the new Mach Schnell. All right, so we're putting the new Mach Schnell one on and we're reusing the bolts and this little cap here. So I'm gonna get one started, try to see if I can line this up and get one going. This is probably the hardest part because you can't really see what you're doing here. Kinda gotta feel around for it. There we go. And I'm gonna put all six of these on kind of simultaneously. I'm not gonna tighten anything down because it has to be torqued to a certain spec. So we've got our crank pulley down there, the new Mach Schnell, and we need to torque those bolts down, all six of them. So it's recommended to do about 18 to 22 foot pounds. So I've got my torque wrench here. We're gonna split the difference and do 20 pounds on each bolt. Now we're gonna install the power steering pulley back on here. Um, just make sure you can try to line your bolts up. Let's do it by hand first. Same thing, we're gonna to torque these down about 24 pounds. And we're gonna do a cross pattern. Obviously, we, that's what we did uh, down here on the other crank pulley. Just cross pattern. Okay, so now we're gonna install the larger belt. Um, it's gonna be the alternator slash water pump belt. And so the crank pulley is this one here. So we need to make sure we install this belt first because it goes behind uh, the backside of the crank pulley down here. So you can see this belt kind of goes around here, the alternator behind the crank pulley and then up through this top pulley here and through the tensioner. So got to install that one first and then we can do the other one. All right, so we've got that big belt on there. So as you can see, it goes all the way around down here to the alternator, around to the crank pulley, back around over the tensioner and then back around again on top. So that's that belt. Everything is on, good to go. All right, now we're gonna install the other belt. So this one is for the power steering slash climate. Um, so you will see that it goes around the crank pulley in the front, around the tensioner, down to the power steering, uh, and up and around the power steering pulley. So we've got the belt down here for this side, but we need to reinstall the uh, tensioner, the upper tensioner here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going. It's behind this, all this piping. There we go. Thread it by hand first. And 
and this is gonna I'm gonna torque this one down same thing to about 20 foot pounds all right guys so we finally got the belt on here it took a little bit longer than we expected because the instructions from Mach Chanel on the video is incorrect and so the belts actually um, you can see, so this left side belt, hopefully you guys can see this. So the left side belt is going to go around the crank pulley down here and then up over that bottom tensioner right here. And then it goes down and around to this far pulley on the left and then it comes back around. And so when it gets to here, hopefully you guys can see, um, the two belts actually are touching each other and they ride along and so the instructions actually tell you uh, on Mach Schnell's diagram that you're going actually above over here on uh, on this one and that's actually incorrect so the two belts have to meet right here and the go goes up and over over this pulley that we removed from the very beginning and then back down the crank and so now you can see that there's basically no tension or that's it's extremely tight here it's not loose there's lots of tension there and we should be good to go and we just fired it up real quick just to make sure and the crank pulley is moving both of the belts both left and right sides so keep that in mind that the diagram is not correct on Mog Schnell's website these two belts actually need to be touching. So this picture here basically explains what I was trying to explain to you guys. It kind of shows you the path in the red is the left side belt. And so as you can see, the tensioner down here and the tensioner up here. So this one, the belt goes above the tensioner on this one and above on the tensioner on the top one. And so like I said, the two belts right here actually touch each other in the middle. Hopefully you guys can see that. So this is the correct pattern for the belt. This is the correct pattern on both sides. The red is the left and the blue is the right side, the larger belt. All right, so the belts are all in. Everything's torqued to spec, it's all tight. Now we're gonna go ahead and put these caps back on. Again, these are just compression fitted, so they just pop right back on. So as I mentioned before, um, you know, when you pull out the radiator fan assembly, it's pretty common for this little uh, nipple right here that comes off of this radiator hose to break. It's just a really thin, brittle plastic, especially when a car has you know this kind of mileage on it. We're at 72,000 miles, so it's obviously gotten its use, and this little nipple here becomes very brittle, and so it tends to break right here off of um, this little expansion tank. And so that's kind of what happened um, while we were doing this install. And I ended up purchasing a replacement part for this particular hose because it all comes as one assembly. So as you can see, this is the little nipple that I'm talking about. Um, right now I've got a little screw in here just to plug it uh, to keep it from leaking. But I ended up purchasing a replacement screw um, or a replacement uh, radiator hose here from FCP Euro. And um, this is a BMW equivalent. Basically, it's the same thing here, so it uh, should be a direct swap. So I just wanna show you guys what the replacement part looks like again. Um, here it is here, this is the replacement hose, this is the nipple, and you can see that there's these little C-clamps, basically one here and one here. Uh, this side might be a little bit easier to see since it's silver, but you'll see that it's a little C-clip that kind of compression fits through the, through the actual uh, assembly here and connects to the actual car. And so um, what we need to do is take a flathead screwdriver. This is what we're gonna do on the old existing one that's messed up. Um, we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver, kind of place it in between this little section here between the metal and the plastic, and we're gonna prop this up just like that. And it's gonna basically release the, uh, this portion of the hose. And there's one on this side and one on this side. Right there, so. One thing to keep in mind here, since we are uh, screwing with the radiator here, there is going to be quite a bit of coolant that is going to pour out of here. So just have, um, have some rags and some, some napkins handy. Uh, I've got some old t-shirts here. I'm actually going to throw it down there um, in the bottom of the engine bay just so we aren't making a completely huge mess. Uh, but just want to keep that in mind. All right, so I've got uh, 
in a bunch of rags all over the place just to try to protect as much as I possibly can. I don't want to get radiator fluid, you know, coolant on all of the, uh, you know, all the belts and all that stuff. So we're gonna start on this side first. Um, like I said, there's gonna be a little metal C-clip. Just gonna pull it up just like that. And it's kind of wrapped around, as you can see, this kind of little hooks on that side, so. And we've got a replacement for this, so this is basically garbage. So for this one in the back, it's a little bit harder to get uh, get to with a little flathead screwdriver. So I'm actually using, you know, if you've got like a angled pick or something of that nature, I'm using, this is a, basically a, a paint can opener from, you know, a, a paint store or a hardware store. Um, so I'm using this as my pick basically, because kind of got to get it from the back side, just like that. So that's something with a pick edge, angled edge. And then, should be able to get it off now. There we go. So now comes the messy part. Um, this is gonna take a little bit of force, but you just gotta pull it off the motor. And again, we might lose some fluid, so just keep that in mind. It's a pretty big mess. And then we can leave this side as well. I'm just gonna take a towel and plug, try to plug this hole up. So don't lose a ton. Pull this side off. On this side, you just gotta pull really hard. There we go. So we got that off. Let's swap the new one on. All right, so before we put the hose back on, we're gonna go ahead and put the radiator fan assembly back in. Um, in order to do this, let's see if I can get my light down here. In order to do this, on the bottom of the radiator, you'll see um, you'll see some little tabs down here. There's this one here, and then this one on this side. So the bottom of the radiator assembly has, as you can see, there's a little tab here and a tab here. And so those two need to slide into those little slots down here. And then you also see uh, right here on this side, there's a little clip type thing where uh, the plastic will slide, the radiator fan assembly will slide into this. Same thing with the other side over there. This one here, right here, and then one down there. And so you just want to make sure that when you put this in, that that's going in, that's going in. Your wires are all going to be, um, or your lines down there are all going to fit back inside of these little holders and then this tab this tab slides in and then this tab slides in so it's kind of hard to see I just figured I'd point that out before we actually get it back into the car because the likelihood of you actually seeing that on camera is going to be pretty slim all right let's get this back in here just gotta be really careful we don't want to up any of the blades or anything either. So. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, it's going to be a really tight fit, and that's why this breaks off so so very easily. So once you've got the radiator back into place, um, you just want to make sure that the all the lines underneath are all connected still, and you tucked it back in. And everything's back where it needs to go, and then we can go ahead and put this uh, this T25 back into place here. So now that that's back into place, we can go ahead and plug the uh, fan assembly back in. So it just clips right on, just like that. And then now we can take our expansion tape line, put this back in, and then we can go ahead and put our hose back on. And we can put our new hose back on here. 
and then we're gonna have to refill it obviously with uh, some coolant since we lost a little bit along the way. All right, so on the new piece here, um, basically I left these C-clamps in, but I did prop them up because what happens is when you push it in, it'll actually lock it into place. And so we don't need to take this thing completely off. We just need to have it uh, loosened. So as you can see, I've got that loosened on this side and this side. It only goes on one direction, just the way the uh, OEM one was. So I'm gonna move my rag out of the way real quick, make sure everything's out of the way. Everything's pretty clean down there. Um, if you happen to have any, you know, radiator fluid on anything, try to go ahead and wipe it up as best you can. Um, everything looks pretty clean for the most part, so I think we're okay. Uh, I'm gonna start on this side first since this side's harder to do. Basically, just slides on in place. So actually, the uh, the bottom on this side actually has a little uh, a little ridge that slides into this part here. So it only goes on the one direction. So just make sure you line that stuff up first. That's the good thing about this is it's a flexible pipe, so. Nagle it. Okay, so that's in. Just gotta push it in all the way. There we go. And then let's snap the C clamp on. And this side, same thing. All goes on one direction. Just like that. It snaps into place. Make sure you get it all the way on first. Same thing, it's got like a little ridge. And this actually slides in. There we go. Pop it in place, just like that. So on this line here that comes from the expansion tank, um, you'll see this metal clip here. We had one on this side and where the broken nipple was. I didn't want to cut this or anything and I didn't want to buy a whole new piece because this was literally the only problem was getting that um, broken nipple out, but I was able to get that out. Um, this little clip here, you need a special tool for that. Um, and you know, with this being, you know, uh, it's going to be a track car eventually. So um, if we want to be able to pull stuff off easily, um, I didn't want to buy another one of these. So what I'm actually going to use is a worm clamp. I purchased this on Amazon. This is an eight to 12 millimeter. Um, and it's basically, has a little flat or a Phillips head on this side so that we can tighten it. And so this does take a special tool, like I said, a special clamp, special tool in order to get this on, but this gives us the ability to uh, pull this back off relatively easily. If for some reason, you know, we're at the track and we have a problem, um, we can actually pull this off. So a lot of guys have done this on the forums and it doesn't seem to be an issue as long as it's not going to come off, as long as it's tight and snug, I don't see this being an issue. So, I just want to make sure that this is all the way on there before tightening this down. Try to get this up there. There we go. Alright, so we've got our rubber hose on all the way. It's in place. Now we can go ahead and tighten this bad boy down. Just like that. As you can tell, it's not going anywhere. It's not gonna come off. And everything is back into place. Good to go. All right guys, that wraps up today's video for the Mock Chanel Underdrive Pulley Kit. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, please let me know in the comments below. Um, we obviously still need to put on the intake system here, but I'm gonna make that a separate video just in case anybody's looking you know, specifically for a Mock Chanel intake um, DIY. So that'll be a separate video. I'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, otherwise, everything looks good. Everything fits again. Everything's back into place. The only thing we need to do is add a little bit of additional uh, coolant, which I'm going to do here off camera, but um, everything else seems to be good to go. So be on the lookout for the next video for the Mock Chanel intake system. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow us along on this track build with Kevin's car, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.